overrode myself Well, I can't go down that road myself If I can't take you, I'm gonna carry me All right, that was Down the Dirt Road Blues, which completely different uh, rhythm than Poor Me, but a lot of uh, some of the same sort of positions that we're going to be using. Now, um, in relation to the different positions that we're going to be playing out of throughout the lesson, I do put the simpler arrangement first. doesn't mean that it's a simple song or an easy song. It just means that whatever is the simpler, like with the C position, we're only going to cover Poor Me and Down the Dirt Road Blues. So I put Poor Me first because that was obviously the simpler um, arrangement or piece. And Down the Dirt Road is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more aggressive. It's a, a little bit tougher of a song. And Down the Dirt Road also has 34 blues, which is very similar. It's got a different rhythm to it. I'm not going to cover the differences between the two. Um, because I used 34 blues on a Delta Blues anthology lesson that covered uh, Patton, Willie Brown, Tommy Johnson, and Son House. So I took three songs from this Patton lesson, really, and applied it to that Delta Blues lesson. So I did 34 blues um, and Stone Pony Blues and another song as well. So. Down the Dirt Road, again, different rhythm. It's more aggressive, but it's still, still relaxed nonetheless. Um, the right hand is a different strumming technique that really, than I think that I've ever played prior to you know, playing this song. And what we're going to be doing in the intro is going with up. So we've got up, thumb, one, two, three, thumb, one. And again, as I said in Poor Me, and I'll continue to say it through every song, it's best to pick one direction of strumming with Patton's music. So whether you want to go up or whether you want to go down, again, when I'm going down, I'm using my fingernail, but they're completely different approaches and, and they sound completely different. Where up has kind of more of a softer side, where down with my fingernail certainly has more attack to it. So the intro, up. Thumb, one, two, three, thumb, one, two. And that's all he's going to do, and he's going to slide up. But for sake of just practice, because I know, again, for me, I hadn't really played this sort of rhythm prior to this song. So if you just want to have something to practice with, with that rhythm, to get it, get it more familiarized with you, other than just that beginning intro, you can just go up, thumb, one, two, three, thumb, one, two, three, thumb, one, two, three. Kind of practice, get yourself used to playing that rhythm, or you can go down. So that's just a little practice rhythm there to get used to playing this rhythm for the song. If if you know if you find it uh, unusual, which I, I actually did myself. So again, that intro, thumb or up. And then he's gonna slide up to that eighth fret with that single string, so three to eight. Eight, six to three. Now he's gonna be doing this top tapping throughout the song. And for me, I use it for probably about half the song. So when he's going up, the best way that I've found to do this, and I'm certainly not saying that this is how Patton did it, but this makes the most sense to me, is for those of you who are familiar with just resting your pinky while you're playing, well, all I've been doing is now, instead of resting it, or even if you're used to floating it, is just using that, and you have to find a spot. You can tell that, you know, there's some spots. That's going to change. So find a spot in your guitar that produces the nice, the tone that you want it to sound like. And when I'm doing that, if I wasn't doing the top tapping and doing this lick, I'd use my thumb 
so I would go. So I'd use my thumb, but when I'm doing that top tapping, I can't get my thumb to do what that what it needs to do and and tap at the same time. So I'm I, I'm reduced to using my finger, my first finger, almost as a flat pick and going back and forth. So that's how I approach the top tapping, and when I get down to this lick, so we got this. got that signature lick, I cut out the top tapping when I play that lick. Now Patton doesn't cut it out, but I do because to me the lick is so cool and that's the focus that I want to, I want the attention to be on that lick and anytime you add something you are dividing the, the you know, if I'm tap tapping and doing the lick, the attention is divided when I want all the attention to be on that lick because it's so cool. So I'm not going to top tap during that part, but again, Patton does. But the lick is going to be 4th fret, 2nd string, 3rd fret, 1st string, back to that 2nd string, down to our 1st fret on that 2nd string, G's open, 4th string, 3rd fret, back to that 2nd string, and back to C. So it's actually pretty similar to the lick that we learned in Poor Me, but this one's just slightly different. So I'm going to play real slow looking at that left hand. And he's just going to continue to use that. And then after he's done with the lick, he goes, so that's 6th string to 5th string on that 3rd fret. So putting all that together, you've got the first line of the first verse, which is Going away to a world unknown. Going away to that world unknown. So now we're sliding up that G C type chord that we learned in Poor Me. And again, we're sliding it up to. So if you took a C, I'll just real quick add that first string third fret, slid it up to the eighth fret, but you're going to change the bass to the sixth string. It's a G, C type chord, but it's just an F. So you're going to do eight, six, three, and then the lick. We're going to walk up to G and go to G7. That walk up, since we're out of the C position, we're going to go from second fret, fourth string, to the third fret, G's open to our G chord, and G7, and we're going to stop at that G7. It's going to tap, and back to C. So again, we've got tap, and we've got that triplet run. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and all that is, it's very tricky, but it's on the second string, fourth fret, first string's open, you've got strings two, one, two, moving down to the first fret, we're going to be second string, first fret, third string, second fret, and then it's strings one, two, three. So we've got two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, and all that is is strings one, two, one, two, and two and one together. Get that third string back in tune. It's very tricky. So I'm, when I do this, on my right hand, I use my third finger a lot, which, you know, there's quite a bit of debate about that third finger, but I use it a lot just because there's a lot of popping going on and that third finger for me has always been a good source for popping and I've just grown accustomed to using that third finger so whether whatever finger you want to use I do use my thumb for that second string so I go like that 
And then he does his C, which he does that bass. And then he just starts over again. He's got one verse that he, well, he's got two verses that he changes things a little bit. He's got the verse that says, um, I feel like chopping wood flying everywhere, something like that, where it goes, Well, I feel like chopping. He's going to go up to that 11th fret on that first string and bend it up. So, eight, six, three. So that's one variation. And I believe the second to the last verse, uh, he goes, his G part changes. So he's going to walk up to G, 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 back to G7, but come back to G. Back to G. So that was walking G to G7, back to G. And then we're going to go to our second string, fourth fret, and bend it up, and that first string is open. Back to C. Now the way that he ends the song is really neat, I think. He does. So our C is going to stay the same, that second string, first fret. And we've got three, two, one, and that second string is open. Back to that second string, first fret, and first string is open. So that is Down the Dirt Road Blues. Uh, let's go to the split screen and go through it together. <laughs> 